Today I'm very lucky enough to be talking with Jim Arndt and I'm so proud to have your artwork up in the walls of Timeless Textiles. Jim, thank you so very much for being part of this show. Thank you for the invitation, Ian. Would you like to introduce yourself to um, everyone about you and your artwork? Sure. I am an uh, artist based in the United States of America, and I trained as a painter and drawer, but have turned my attention to the world of textiles for the last 12 or 10 years. I'm a gentleman who enjoys sewing quite a bit. I, um, when I was small, I remember my dad sewing at our Kenmore sewing machine and fixing up his pants to go back out to the fields and work some more. And so that was really my, my introduction to the world of this uh, wonderful machine that could do so many things for us. And when I was a young man, I thought it was a life skill that everybody should learn. You should balance your checkbook, change your oil, and know how to operate a sewing machine. And so much to the chagrin of my painting professors, I pulled out my mom's Kenmore and taught myself how to sew. Primarily now I work in reclaimed denim. All of my material comes donated to me uh, through the generosity of people who like the work. And I get to incorporate their, their material and their stories into some of the portraiture that I do in my studio today. Uh, currently, I'm an associate professor at Coastal Carolina University. I run the galleries there and teach classes in the Department of Visual Arts. And I have the opportunities to share my art work with others. Um, you caught me in the hills of Tennessee at Aramont School of Arts and Crafts where I'm conducting a workshop in radical repair for interested students. I do have um, a small sewing machine collection. I think they find me like wet kittens now. They just kind of show up yeah. at the door. Uh, this week I have with me my 110-year-old uh, cobbler's machine, which is a treadle-powered or hand-operated machine and it's designed to punch through boots for repairs and sews in 360 degrees without moving the object. It's really a wonderful piece of Now you and Marie um, used each other as your portraits, which was just wonderful. So you're both sitting next to each other on the gallery wall chatting at night time when the lights go down. Why did you choose Marie? Marie and I developed a friendship through our shared love of fibers. We also have a shared background growing up in the Rust Belt of the industrial areas of the United States. Marie's a little bit my senior, um, but we've become pretty fast friends over the years. We've gone to exhibitions and conferences together. Um, unfortunately, we live a continent apart. She's on the west coast of the United States and I'm on the far east coast of the United States these days. And so really my studio practice is a way for me to bring the people I love kind of into my studio and have them on my terms. And so um, when Marie and I found out we were invited to this exhibition, it seemed like a really natural fit for us to work with one another's images. And I love it. It's, it's really, you don't get to express your appreciation for friendships. And I've always been able to tell people I love them through a tangible uh, means of, of making images of them. A lot of my work is centered on my family and my family for me is, a, I like to call my blood relation or my biological family and my logical family. And so it's a small group of people that uh, I feel close to, um, that I feel comfortable working with their images. It's, it's a, exercise of power over how somebody's presented to make an image of them. And so I like to make sure that I do it with people who understand that these aren't idealized portraits that I deal with. Um, sometimes they may not like the way in which they're depicted. But when you have a friend like Marie who understands how much effort and love goes into every stitch, um, it's, it's a real opportunity to be able to present her to your audience there. And Jim, could you tell us about the process that you've um, gone through in terms of making the portrait of Marie? Um, a lot of the way that I go about making my work is through a process known as applique. And applique is just a fancy word for patchwork. 
I remember going to Sunday school as a young kid and they had a felt board where they would put up felt figures to tell biblical stories. And my process is, is really a lot like that. You put up little pieces of denim and see if it looks more or less like a face. And then you just pull it away and trim a little bit more and put it back up there. And then through various means, I, I, I sew, I glue, I stitch, I embroider. Um, I like to bring those images together to kind of form a greater whole. As somebody who likes to work in a particular material like denim, I try to work within just the, the language of the material itself. And so I, I limit myself to what denim has available. And those are things like text, there's little embedded text or the buttons or rivets, the belt loops. Those are the, the things that I work with all the way through the canvas. There's no dyeing or painting or anything that goes on. And so I really build my images up from the material that people donate to me and try to use all the parts of it. And that's a way of, um, part of my kind of philosophical aesthetic is I'm trying to extend the value in the life of things by transforming it into art. And rather than see things go in the trash bin or to the landfill, this is a way for me to make a small gesture at trying to reduce some of the impact that we have on, on our environment. And did Marie see her work before um, you sent it to Australia? I showed, shared Marie with Marie a couple of process shots. Um, but primarily she gave me permission to work with her image and both her and I kind of showed each other the finished work as kind of a surprise. And it was really nice to see her work and I'm glad that they could hang together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, even if I can't be with Marie right now, I, this, that's a way for me to be with her. And that's, that's a really nice thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the fact that you um, create faces for the people you love. That must be such a beautiful way of expressing that for people around you. Well, as a man of limited emotional bandwidth, sometimes tangible expressions are easier than verbal expressions. Um, I don't know if it's the patriarchy or socialization or it's just masculinity in general, but sometimes it's way too hard to say I love you. and I've, I've gotten better over the years, but really it was a gift, right? It's, it's, it's a form of, of gift giving. And, and so I've always worked with people that I care for deeply in their images almost exclusively to everything else so that I can try to communicate that. Beautiful. Words, words might be less work, but not for me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> do you do other, other work other than portraits, Jim? Yeah, I, I work in a variety of different materials. And so sometimes I do site-specific installations and sometimes I do sculptural work. Um, one of the pieces that I'm uh, really proud of was actually um, an installation that involved concrete and coal. I had a coal-fired power plant in my community that was being decommissioned. And there was, of course, large, um, coal ash uh, piles that were left there, which are filled with heavy metals and carcinogens and things that aren't good for people. So we were really working hard as a community to get the power company to do the right thing and, and remove that and place it into a class three landfill. So it got me thinking about just the transmission of power and, and that's electrical power, but also social power. Um, here's these big corporations who could choose to leave this in a floodplain, you know, and, uh, when we have a hurricane in South Carolina, those things quickly drown. So I began a process of negotiating with the, with the power company for their coal. I wanted to get them to be a participant of the work the same way I want people to be um, participatory. And so the real art of the piece was the four months of emails and phone calls back and forth, trying to keep them from saying no and trying to get them to do what I wanted to. I was a little bit inspired by um, Christo's efforts in running fence. Christo has a documentary about the making of that installation where he's bribing ranchers with color TVs to get permission to cross their ranch with his art installation. 
And I was struck by kind of the rhetorical finesse that something like that took. And so I tried to do the same thing and eventually it got kicked high enough in the corporation that they said, please go away and stop bothering us. How much coal would you like and where would you like it delivered? And we'll pick it up at the end because we can't sell it to you and we can't give it to you and you can't buy it from us. So um, it, was, it was a really nice way to see what type of power I could exercise. Like as an artist in society, what can I do to sway these corporations to their better angels? And I could um, talk about the final product. There's, there's two piles of repose that this refers to both the slumber of the plant itself but also the angle at which granular material is stacked at is known as its angle of repose. And so I created a series of concrete cast hands, which was the end product of where the fly ash would end up. It would be incorporated into concrete cinder blocks and used as a building material. That's what the power company wanted to do with it. So I spent Oh, those four months casting my hands, two every morning, two every evening, and I created this pile of hands and a pile of coal, and I got the power company to participate and be a collaborator. And th that's the type of work that interests me. Um, you don't always get to, you know, pull off grand gestures like that. Sometimes you go back in the studio and you look at your sewing machine and sit back down. Um, but that was a fun one. That was a lot of fun to do. Well, congratulations for wearing them down. <laughs> <laughs> Persistent phase. <laughs> Jim, it's such a delight to have you part of this exhibition. I'm so grateful. So thank you very much for um, spending time with us today. Thank you very much, Anne. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me to share my work with your side of the world. Uh, it's been a real honor. <laughs>